How's everybody doing? Everybody good today? Yeah. Come on. Me and my son were talking on the way into church this morning about how quick Sunday gets here. It's like Sunday just gets here like quicker than it used to. Anybody feel that? Anybody okay? There's all my old folks. Hey, listen, I love you. Uh, hey, can we give it up for everybody watching online right now? Come on. We love you. We're so glad you're watching. Hopefully you're in a comfortable place where you can sit and listen, take notes, let God speak to you some way, form, or fashion. Hey, before we dive into our fifth week of our series on core values, how about today they are doing like a pre-launch. Like, there's nobody really coming. They're doing a lot of practice services in Hayden today. So we got several of our people in Hayden helping out with practice services. And so we're really excited that September the 8th is a big, gigantic day for our church because we're launching our fourth campus and it just fires me up, pumps me up. Now listen. I know there's a lot of y'all that's fired up too, and I need you to help me out with something. By the way, there's more people on this side than there are on this side. Okay, y'all, the right side is where the sheep are. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Anyway, listen, um, that's a joke. I'm just messing everybody up. Hey, um, real quick, where was I? Oh, I know what it was. This is September the 4th. We are praying there. We're not doing Converge at our campuses. All four campuses are going to be together there praying before we launch on September the 8th. So come on September the 4th and be a part and hang out with us, okay? On September the 4th, pray with us, 6.30, be about an hour-long prayer service, okay? And then listen, th this is gigantic. I need you to hear me on this, hear my heart, all right? September the 8th, I know there are several of you that are just fired up about our Hayden plant. We've been talking about it for almost a year now. We've raised money, we've done everything, and it's here. And there's a lot of y'all that wanna go and help that day celebrate and launch it with us. Can I, can I ask you a favor? Uh, that's going to be a big, gigantic day where we want to have guests there. And if we have 700 of our people that's already part of our church show up, then there will be no room for our guests. And so we're going to ask if you will go later. We'll have it at all three campuses on screen. You're going to see my old ugly fat head on, t on TV, all right? And I'm going to be preaching. You're going to get to, like, I'll be live here. So we're going to celebrate together. If you'll do it from here, that will be great because we're actually doing it in what they call a cafetorium, all right? It's where they eat their, 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 their quesadillas and their, their, you know, their, all their food in the lunchroom, and they have a, like a, like a, a auditorium in there, all right? And so uh, there's about 350 seats we've got set up in there. And so we do two services at 700 people. At all our campuses, we've had it close to 700 people launch at every campus we've launched. And that's just people that come from the community. Okay, so if we have that same kind of day and then all of you guys show up, then we ain't got no room for people, all right? And so just please hear my heart and please do everything you can to stay here. And then, and then in a few weeks when we find out how many we got, maybe go and support them, give them a high five or sub. Glad y'all glad y'all doing good and do that kind of stuff. Everybody good? Y'all love me still? Okay, th that'd be phenomenal, wonderful. Hey, listen, I know y'all see uh, a rubber band ball and I got some other stuff up here. I'm gonna use it throughout my message. I hope it helps you out, okay? Hey, listen, been talking about core values of our church, who we are, what we're about. I'm hoping that you've enjoyed this series. I'm hoping it's helped you out to understand who we are and why we do what we do and how we strive to be, uh, you know, live by our core values in a hard way. And we really want you as part of the body of Christ to take these to heart, get it in your DNA, in the fi every fiber of your being and let God use you in a large way in these areas, okay? So every single week, we have said our core values together so that you'll know what they are. You've seen signs outside, so why don't we do that again this week? Everybody ready to roll? Y'all ready to do this? We're going to do it with passion. I know that some of you haven't had your coffee yet. I have, so I'm fired up, and I'll make up for you whenever you don't feel comfortable doing it. It's all good, okay? So we're gonna do, I'm going to count to three, and we're going to splash them up there, and we're going to say them with passion. Y'all ready to do this? All right, here we go. One, two, three. Simplicity. Unity, fun, generosity, family. Okay, excellence. Excellence is supposed to be there somewhere. Hey, okay, here's what I need. I need somebody with really fast fingers next time in Jesus' name. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, okay, this is awkward for us. Huh, listen, so today we're talking about simplicity, all right? We're going to talk about simplicity, and I'm hoping and praying that you understand the importance of simplicity. Now, listen, don't, don't, you, don't, I'm pretty sure everybody in this room hates it when things aren't simple, all right? I believe everybody likes it when it's simple for us to be able to accomplish because that makes life better, all right? We hate things that are very difficult, things that are not simple. And honestly, whenever things aren't simple and everybody else around you thinks that it's simple and you can't do it, it makes you, I mean, you feel like an idiot, all right? And they look at you like you're a moron at times. I don't know if anybody's been like that. That's me, whenever somebody asks me to change a tire or change the oil in my car, um, 
They look at me like I'm an idiot because I'm not very good at it. But the big picture is, don't, don't judge me in Jesus' name. Listen, uh, I like shopping. Listen, here's the big picture. Um, so <laughs> some of y'all are like, I'm never coming back this year. That dude is not a man. I used to work for Coca-Cola. I drove a big truck. I had a steering wheel like this right here. I'm a man. All right, listen. <laughs> you know, I think about things that are simple. You know, I think about the Apple phone. You know, when I first got my Apple phone, when it first came out, I was looking everywhere for an instruction book because I felt like I need an instruction book to take this complicated phone and use it. But guess what? They made it so simple for the consumer that basically it was incredibly easy to use. You didn't even have to have, we didn't even have to have uh, any kind of instruction manual because honestly, it just walked you right through it. It was easy to do. How many of you just love that? Y'all love that? Come on. Some of you got Androids. You're like, I'm changing to Apple today. It's all good. What about the GPS? Like, how in the world did any of us ever make it with a map? Like, if you're an individual, like, you think that, like, texting on your phone is dangerous, try a big, gigantic map trying to drive down the road to figure out which way you're going and which road to turn down. Like, how did we do that back in the day? Uh, how, how many people in this room never really grew up without GPS? You did not grow up with a map. Throw your hands up. You didn't grow up with a map, all right? Like, okay, listen, y'all need to try it out just one time, all right? Not driving though, sit in a parking lot at Walmart or something. Look, it is incredibly difficult. We are blessed. GPS has made it easy. Uh, what about this? It's new, it's sweet. Me and my wife, especially my wife, absolutely loves this. What about Walmart pickup? Anybody like Walmart pickup in the house? Come on, throw your hands up. All right, come on. Ain't nothing like getting online and just tapping it in and sitting there in your pajamas, sitting there in the parking lot, like, oh God, please bring it out and load it up for me and high five them out the window when you leave. Hey, listen, they, why, why didn't we come up with this a lot? I wish I would have been a genius and came up with that a long time ago. Kind of like bottled water. Who would have ever thought you could buy a bottled water for $4? And, and who would do that? That's just dumb how you get out of but we do it because we dumb. listen it is amazing I think about Amazon like man you got these these this mortar buildings shutting down because you can shop online in your pajamas and they'll drop it off at your house life is simple we like it when life is simple you know I think about you know I got a little pack um you know I'm getting old and my bones are starting to hurt a lot more and and I get tired a lot easier and it's probably because I, I like fried stuff too much and I, I uh you know, I, I, I just feel like, man, I'm just not like I used to be. I need some help. So I ask a pharmacist who's a friend of mine, Stephen Skinner, who used to be a pharmacist, actually, hey, help me out with vitamins. Like, he's kind of a hippie. He likes doing all the, all the you know, veggie, he likes to drink, like, guacamole shakes and stuff like that. It's just gross, all right? So I asked him, I said, hey, dude, like, I need some, help me out with this. So he sent me to this place called Persona. So basically, you just type in a survey of, of you. I did just use your fingerprint of this is what I do this is how much I exercise this is how tired I am this is this is where my bones hurt this is and what they do is is they gener they just kind of put together a package for you all right a package they put together a package of vitamins for you all right now and so what they do is they send it to you in the mail and every day for 28 days you just tear it off and you take it with your food and you just make it easy. You make it incredibly easy. I don't have to go buy one or have to go and look for 19. I just got one little packet and it's right here and it's easy and I gag most of the time when I do it because it's about 19 horse pills, all right? But the thing about it is it's easy and it makes me feel a lot better. And so, listen, we like it when things are easy. You know, there's a lot of things that are not easy. I, I'm just gonna throw uh, maybe one of them, maybe, maybe a couple of them out there that I think might be a little difficult uh, that I think everybody in this room hates. How many of you hate calling a business and you get an automatic system? Anybody, anybody else in the house? Who just absolutely loves talking to a robot? Anybody? Anybody in the house? All right. Listen, if you are here today and you own a business and you have an automated system, you are hurting your customer service immediately. We hate it with a passion. Anybody else hate it with a passion? Anybody? Okay. Okay. Y'all don't hate it enough because if you hated it and somebody's got it, they're going to get rid of it. All right. Y'all better be louder on that next time. Listen, you know, I hate calling an uh, uh, automated business and you know, they're like, if you'd like to buy a lawnmower, press one. If you'd like to have a box of kittens, press two. You know, if, if you'd like to know, learn more about nuclear weapons, press three. Anything else, go to zero. And then you push zero and nothing happens. I, it drives me crazy. I think about this. Um, you know, you'll call an automated system. It's like, what can I help you with today? Uh, I want to pay off my credit card. The system says, you want to cancel your credit card? Uh, no, I want to pay my credit card. System says, you want me to use your credit card points? No. Can I please talk to a representative? Uh, system says, I should be able to help you. 
How can I help you? I just told you how I want to help you. I want a representative. Listen, all I want to do is talk to a human. Can I, does anybody else feel that way? All right, listen, I, just let me talk to a human that understands me, which by the way, most of them can't understand me like, dude, you are redneck. Where are you from? I have, we actually carry on conversation. We have dialogue on the phone. Like I get to know them. They get to know me. I know where they're from. I know where they're from. I know what persona they take. I know everything about them by the time we get done with the conversation. We have great conversation on the phone. Listen, amen. come on. You like that, don't you? I'm glad somebody likes that. Gee, I had amen like that. I talk about Jesus. I'm talking about vitamins. They amen me. Listen. So here's the deal, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, Paul is talking to the Corinthians. This is what he says. He says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words and impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to throw everything else out the window. I'm going to make this as easy as possible for you. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. We're going, to, we're going to forget everything. We're going to focus on Jesus, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain, very simple. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied on the power of the Holy Spirit. Boy, I wish we'd do more of that today. I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. That's why I hope every single week that my message is simple and plain. And a lot of you guys are like, how does Andy do that? Like, you know God's got to be with that guy. Like, have you ever tried to talk to any one-on-one? It's very difficult. Like, God's all over the place. Like, you know, if he, can, if he can communicate from up there with all of us, God's involved. All right? So, listen. So, let's talk about simplicity. There's two points. If you got your app, you can go ahead and break that out and go ahead and type it in. Point number one. First thing I want you to understand is that church should not be complicated. Church should not be complicated. It's easy. It's easy for us. It's easy for anybody that does church. It's easy to complicate it, to complicate church without even meaning to. You know, one thing that we probably work on the most as a staff is we work on probably more than anything else is constantly trying to make things as simple as possible. You know, we've noticed that the more you grow, especially when you grow with campuses, we're about to start a fourth campus, the more you grow, the easier it is to get complicated, the harder it is to communicate everything you need to communicate with people. So we're doing everything we can to try to communicate and make it easy and simple for you. For all you guys that have parents, I mean, have parents, (laughs) all you people that have kids that are parents. Listen, um, we we just changed a lot of our stuff with our kids with all our desperation kids. We, we changed up age groups. We changed up where we did the students and the kids because we felt like um, it was very difficult for a lot of people here to figure out where the kids were. So we want to make it as easy as possible because we understand that kids ministry is very, very, uh, is very, very important to you and to us. And so we did everything. We worked hard on trying to figure out what's the best way to do this at all three campuses. It's not just Coleman campuses, it's all three campuses and now the new campus. So we wanted to do that and get prepared for when we launch this campus, they ready to roll and get things done, all right? You know, there's, there's probably, you're probably going to see some things in the next few weeks that's going to change in the back back there, all right? Because we're trying, we feel like that's a little bit too complicated back there, uh, and it makes a, a lot of information have to come out, we're going to try to make it all one. Listen, it's little things like that where we're constantly trying to simplify things as much as possible. Why? Because we want guests that come into this place that they understand quicker. Because the way we do church is completely different than a lot of things a lot of people are used to. A lot of things people are used to. So we want people to understand it as quick as possible. Why? Because we want to make it as simple as possible. So the big picture is, is it's probably one of the hardest things we do as a staff is to try our best to keep things as simple as possible to help people understand what's happening around our church. And I listen, we are not perfect at it yet. We still got a long ways to go. And by the way, if you're somebody that likes the way things are, like I just like it the way it is. I just, you're probably gonna hate our church. Cause we're gonna change, we're gonna tweak, we're gonna work, we're gonna tweak, we work our tails off to make things as best as it can be. And you may like it the way it is, but other people is very much is very much a struggle for them to figure out what's going on. It might be easy for you. It's kind of like this. The staff has moved us from text messaging to what they call Slack, all right? It's Slack. 
people like me who are not very genius when it comes to like, like telephones and comes to computers and stuff, that's me. Slack has taken me a long time to get used to. And all those, all, all my young people on staff absolutely know what Slack is. Has anybody ever heard of Slack? Throw your hands up. All right, that's all the young people in the house. Uh, I'm just kidding, it's probably some old folks too. Big picture is, is it took me forever to get it. They looked at me like I was a moron. I was like, man, I don't know how to work this, but I worked and I worked and I worked and I got it and now I see what they're talking about. It is a lot easier. So big picture is church should not be complicated. Well, listen, when we launched our church, we said we wanted to keep our church as simple as possible. We do not want to do a lot of things good. We want to do a few things great. We don't want to do a jillion different things and be average because we're spread thin. Listen, we like it when we can make more of an impact. So if we focus on what we're best at and put all our eggs in those baskets instead of trying to do everything under the sun, if we try to do everything under the sun, then, then honestly, we'll just be average. We'll just do things average. But if we can focus on just a few things that we feel like we can be great at and we can stay in our lanes and we can do what we feel like God's called us to do. And so Desperation Church has a calling, just like other churches in the city has a different calling than we do. And so we try to stay in our lanes. Now, I'll be honest with you. One thing that we want to do is we want to give you guys as much purpose as possible. So the more people that want to jump on board with us, the more stuff we can do as a church, because here's the deal, we're not gonna wear ourselves out and wear ourselves thin because that will keep us from being the ministers that God's called us to. God's called us to raise you up as ministers also. We have people coming to us on a regular basis saying things like, I think we need to plan a church, plan, a Af- plan an orphanage like in Africa. Or I think we need to start a discipleship program. Or I think we need to start a food bank. Or we need to start a homeless shelter. And so, you know, if we did everything that everybody was passionate about, there's no way we could be good, ever. And so, you know what I'm going to tell you? You got something like that for me? You know what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to look at you and it's like, it sounds like to me God's placed that on your heart. And it sounds like to me you're passionate about that. So why don't you partner with us and why don't you lead it? Let's get after it. Now, I'm going to have 14 people coming after me. All my staff's like, whoa, hold on. Because what happens is a lot of people say they're passionate about it. They'll lead it for about two months and they realize, like, oh my gosh, this is harder than I thought it was. And then it's piled back on top of us. So we're going to do everything we can to make a good decision that we're going to you know, do the right thing. So some of you might not like that, but I'm not here to be average. I'm here to be great at what God's called us to do. All right. And so we're going to do that. That's what we do. That's who we are. So our vision statement is very simple. When we started, we don't want to do a 14 paragraph vision statement of who we are. Our vision statement is rebuild. Revive and restore. All right, rebuild, revive, restore. It comes from Isaiah 61. We want to capture the heartbeat of Jesus. Capture his heartbeat. We want to rebuild cities. We want to revive uh, people's lives. We want to help restore people back to to, to Jesus and restore people back to who God is, restore people from religion. We want to rebuild, revive, restore all across the board, every way possible. And the only way we can do that is by capturing the heartbeat of Jesus. Only Jesus can do that. And so that's why we do what we do. You know, our four areas of vision is very simple. It's encounter God, experience life change, change your world, discover purpose. Now, there's a little bit more behind it, but man, we want you guys to catch hold of the the vision of our church, encounter God. Basically, we believe that encountering God is the presence of God. It's, It's prayer. It's whenever you walk into a Sunday service that you experience the presence of God because we do converge. It's the boiler room of what we do on Wednesday nights, and there's lots more prayer taking place throughout our church throughout the week, and we believe that prayer produces the presence of God, and so we want people to encounter God. Why? Because I can't change lives. The people around you can't change lives, but Jesus can change lives, and so we want to be vessels that God uses to to create the presence of God, to create the experience of the presence of God in this place so they can change your life. I'm praying and hoping that God is changing your life in this church some way, form, or fashion. Why? Because the presence of God is strong in this place. And so we believe in prayer. We we will never, ever, ever do a Bible study on Wednesday night. If you want a Bible study, you do it in a community group. We're going to do prayer on Wednesday night from now on, all right? Until I die and there's another pastor comes in and says there's a better way to do it, all right? And so we're going to keep praying because I believe prayer produces the presence of God. The second thing is change your world. Well, I'm sorry, experience life change. Experience life change, we believe, is is in community groups. That's why we push community groups on a regular basis. We just started them. If you've not jumped into one, you still got four weeks left in this semester to get in a community group. You need to get in a community group. Say, Andy, why are you talking so fast? Because I got a lot to say. Listen. (laughs) And uh, I had an energy drink and it is kicking my booty. Listen. Life change. Listen, we believe that life change takes place in the context of relationships. Life change takes place in the context of relationships. That's why we push you on a regular basis. Please, pretty please, please, get in the community group. Don't be scared, don't let fear contradict, I mean, keep you 
from jumping into a small group or community group. I just said small group. I'm not doing push-ups. Listen, <laughs> you've got to dive in because it's one of our four areas of vision. Change your world. We're passionate about missions. We're, we're see the need, be the answer. We will see needs around us in our backyard. We will see needs around us across the world. We got a Brazil mission trip coming up really, really soon, an interest meeting. We got another interest meeting coming up really, really soon about Guatemala. We got all kinds of mission trips we take place across the world. We got Serve Day coming up September the 7th. First Saturday Serve, you need to go be a part of it. Come to the campus downtown at eight o'clock. Be a part of our September 7th Saturday Serve Day and go out and change the world. We believe that being hands and feet of Christ is how you lead. So we do missions on a regular basis. Discover your purpose, which is basically our connect team. All the people that you see from the parking lot to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the doors, to the people inside this room who are greeters and people that keep your babies and, and, and people who, 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 you know, where you got your coffee, that didn't just appear today. Somebody had to make that. That's part of our Connect team. We help them discover their gifts so they can use their gifts. You can use your gifts inside the church first. God has given everybody in this room gifts to use inside the body of Christ first. Why? So that we can become stronger inside the church together. All right? If you're not using your gifts inside the church, then why not? I'll be honest with you. Can I be honest with you? I'm not here to put guilt on you. I'm just here to be honest. I believe it's disobedience. God's given you gifts to use this. Where you come to this church, where you go to another church, we give you plenty of opportunity to be ministers here in this place. And so we challenge you to go to Connect class. All right? Next week, Connect class. All right, go. Be a part. Ch check it out. Find out more about who we are and then get plugged into a Connect team so that God can use you in large, large ways. Um, and that, so that's discover your purpose. And so you'll, use, you'll discover your, your gifts on inside the church, but you'll begin to use them outside. You'll be blown away how God will use you outside these four walls in your gifts, okay? Listen, if we feel like we're doing anything that doesn't match up to these four areas, encounter God, experience life change, change your world, discover purpose. If we feel like in our church as a staff that we aren't doing, we aren't following the vision, we're getting outside the vision of our church, uh, then what we do is we can it. We, we just get rid of it. Because God's called us specifically to do certain things. And we start to get to the place to where it's not simple anymore. And we want it to be simple for you. It needs to be simple for us. It needs to be simple for people to discover Jesus. If we're dreaming of things that we see uh, and that we love, but it doesn't match up to one of these four areas, our vision, and it's outside of our vision, we won't do it. It makes church too complicated. And so we want to stay great and what God's called us to do. We're still working on trying to be great, all right? Listen, at our church, I believe that the way we can make it as simple as possible, the way we make it as simple as possible is that we center everything around Jesus. Jesus, Jesus should be the centerpiece of our church. We focus on Jesus and who he is. We show people Jesus, we serve people like Jesus, we speak life-giving words like Jesus, we give Jesus away by the way we serve, we learn together about Jesus, everything we do is wrapped around Jesus. You'll hear me talk about Jesus every single week, some way, form, or fashion. If I do not, then I have failed. Why? Because I want the centerpiece of this church to be revolved around about the one that died for us and rose from the grave for us, the one that saved our lives and rescued us. I want it to be revolved around Jesus because Jesus is the one that changes lives, okay? So... And so I believe that a lot of times we get away from the simplicity of the gospel, the simplicity of Jesus. And a lot of times we make Christianity way too complicated. Christianity, a lot of times, it looks like this rubber band ball. You see this right here? Um, you know, you, you feel like you got all these, these different compartments of, re, of religion to really walk the Christian life some way, form, or fashion. And so... Uh, you know, whenever we think about Christianity, a lot of people think, like, man, all of this theology, man, like, wait, man, wait, you know, it's just way too much. I mean, I got to learn a lot more or, or all these concepts. I mean, I just don't know what I'm going to do with all the concepts they got in this Christian church. And, man, Greek and Hebrew, are you kidding me? Holy cow, I just don't know if I can get all this Greek and Hebrew. And, man, I got to do all these things and not do all these things. Holy cow, man, like, that's just way too much work for me, man. We just got... Oh, I mean, just, this is getting very, very difficult. Man, Christianity is just way too complicated. And it's amazing how many of us have walked away from the faith because we've complicated Christianity, or we as a church have done a great job of complicating Christianity. Man, we got to stop complicating Jesus. We got to stop complicating Jesus. Listen, we got to put the centerpiece back where it needs to be and revolve around him. 
Which leads me to my next and last point, number two. Jesus should not be complicated. Jesus should not be complicated. It says this, for I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ. I'm putting all of our theology aside, our doctrine aside. I'm, to, I'm, putting, around, I'm putting aside all of our doctrinal beliefs. I'm putting aside the Greek and Hebrew. I'm putting aside, I, I, we're going to centralize and focus on Jesus Christ and him crucified because that's as simple as it needs to be right now. We're going to focus in on Jesus. That's what Paul says. You know, Jesus used common, simple people to change the world. You know that? Use a bunch of fishermen, tax collectors, common people to change the world. Do you know, Jesus made the gospel simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes, by the way, that's the only way I know it right, is in the King James Version. For whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God so loved, it's simple. It's, it, for God so loved the world, he loves you, that he sent his baby boy to die so that you can have life. And have it to the fullest, abundant life, John 14, 6. But we've complicated it. Jesus made the gospel simple. It's for all people. Now, some people don't like that. I'm just going to say it. It's for all people. It's only by his grace through faith, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Listen, it's simple. Jesus made the gospel simple. We are great at complicating things. Listen, Jesus was always trying to make it as simple as possible. Now, there were times that he would talk in parables that basically he was wanting the Holy Spirit to help reveal to people or, or his teachers to reveal to people the, 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 the points that he was trying to make, which would cause them to seek him. But the disciples, they, they were complicating things a lot. There was a time where basically... They were complicating so much that all these children were running at Jesus and Jesus was playing with them, loving on them and hanging out with them. And they all thought that Jesus was, was basically being disturbed by the kids. And Jesus, they were like, hey, kids, leave him alone. That's Jesus. Don't, don't have it. Move. Get away. From, he's got more important things to do than you kids. Get away from him. And Jesus was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. I let these babies come to me. Let these kids come hang out with me. And then he goes a, a step further because he's always trying to teach simple. He says, if you do not have faith of a child, then there's a great possibility, a large possibility, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of God. You've got to have the faith of a child. Well, what's the faith of a child? It's simple. You ever thought about that? About your grandbabies and your kids. You know, some of the most spiritual human beings on earth are little bitties. And we need to take note because Jesus took note and wanted to teach them through. Wanted to teach his disciples with the kids. What is it about kids? They're innocent in their faith. Man, I just believe. I believe. Listen, I'm not getting complicated. Like, man, how in the world? Like, where, who made God? Like, they don't, they don't believe. They, they, they will ask you some incredibly difficult questions, but it don't bother them. They still believe in Jesus. They, they, why? Because they got innocent faith. They believe, in, they believe in God easier than we do as humans. It's their faith. Their love for him is large. Their love for Jesus is large. We can learn from a bunch of humans that don't know the Bible as much as you do, that probably don't pray like you do, but we can learn a lot from them because their faith is stronger than ours a lot of times. It's innocent. Their prayers are simple. Their prayers are incredibly simple. God, I pray for mama, and I pray for daddy, and I pray for Fido, and I pray for Callie the cat, and I pray, like, you know what? I think God enjoys that. It's so simple. We even make the prayer for food difficult. Are you kidding me? Listen, listen we, we talked about this Friday night over dinner with some people. Like, it's so funny how we pray. God, well, we're we about to eat a big, fat, juicy, fried pork chop, mashed potatoes and gravy, all kinds of extra cheese and our macaroni and cheese starches for days. Got rolls and cornbread. We about to tear it up and then we say, God bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. <laughs> no, oh no, hold on. <laughs> and our bodies for thy service. Like, when any other time in your life do you use the word thy? 
You use the word thy and it just calm for conversation. Thou art looking great today. But it's so funny how we've even complicated the Lord's Prayer. Why don't we just say, God, thank you so much for this food. Amen. Some of y'all are like, uh oh, it's not spiritual enough, Pastor. Well, you better, some of y'all need to fast and pray over your food because you're about to die, you keep eating what you eat. Listen, I am too. Listen, God bless this food to the nursery. Offer. We you use the word nourishment. Like Leah, our kids aren't getting much nourishment. Like we need to do everything we can because they need God because thou art what he says. And listen, I, I don't know. I mean, like we make it, it's just crazy. We need simple prayers. Faith of a child. We as a church and as individuals should never complicate the gospel or complicate Jesus. But I feel like so many times it's so easy to complicate Jesus. Why do we complicate him? Why do we complicate church? Why do we complicate Jesus so much? You know, I, I really believe that's why so many people in this room have walked away from Jesus at some point in your life. And that might, listen, you may be here today because somebody invited you and you may have walked away from God for a long time. I mean, you came to the right day. Listen, why, why have so many people walked away from church or really struggle with who Jesus is in your life? You know, there's so many of us that don't live our Christian lives around Jesus. We live our lives around works, religious thought process, that we, we hope that if I, if I work hard enough for him, that if I know my Bible well enough, I just hope and I just pray. Now you would never say this out loud, but you live your life like this. It's not simple. That if I, I just hope that I'll gain his approval some way, form or fashion. Which Jesus made that simple. God made that simple. It's through his son. You've got God's approval. I didn't say that's terrible English. You have God's approval because of Jesus. Stop working your little fingers to the bone to gain God's approval. If you're a believer, Jesus is approved of you. You're approved in his name because of the blood of Jesus Christ that covers you. That's what should, that's what should motivate us when we understand the beauty of who he is to want to pursue it. Not trying to gain his approval. You already have his approval. Quit complicating things. Many of us live our lives this way. It's complicating Jesus way too much. A lot of people will say or think this way a lot of times. Not, not even meaning to. Because it's been so ingrained in us. I got to do these things. And you can't do these things to be right with God. And God says you're complicating things. You're only made right with me through the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Through the good news. Now, a lot of people would say, like, hold on now, preacher. You're comp, like, you're, you're, you're teaching easy. It's, it's, it's too easy for people. You're making it easy for people. Well, can I say, you're making it complicated for people. Hold on, preacher. That's easy believism. I mean, you're just telling them to believe in Jesus. I, listen, I'm not saying that. The Bible says that. Jesus says that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, begotten son that whosoever believes places their faith and their trust. I didn't make that. The, Jesus says that. So if you want to complicate it more than the death, burial, and resurrection, placing your faith in the blood of Jesus that was shed for you, him taking the wrath of God, being buried for three days and raising from the dead, you want to make it more complicated than that, then you're missing out on what the Bible says. Actually, you're probably more like the Judaizers who say it was Jesus plus the law. You're just a Judaizer today in the 21st century. It's all about Jesus. Everything focuses around Jesus. He's the one that made it simple to understand. It's easy, believe, it's easy believe he's a pastor. Listen, you had heard me say that. The Bible says that. Rules are exhausting. Rules are exhausting. That's why so many people walk away from the faith because they really feel like they got to live by a bunch of rules. Rules are exhausting. God's love for us is life-giving. It's amazing how we as the church are so good at taking the Holy Spirit out of the equation of most of our Christian life and most of our Christian preaching. We take the Holy Spirit completely out, but it's the Holy Spirit that is a helper and a guide that leads us, leads us to knowing God more. 
Don't complicate the Christian walk and the gospel. God gave us a manual to follow. It's called the Bible, and the Holy Spirit will guide us through it. He's our teacher. He's our guide. Yes, we got people around us that have the gift of teaching and preaching that will help us also. You need mentors like that. But don't overcomplicate Jesus. Jesus should be easily grasped by the, by, by the, world's mo- by, by the most worldly, unchurched people out there. It should be easily grasped through Christians, through the church, through people like us. It's simple. Listen, Jesus, I know you need you to hear me. It's going to be too easy for some of you. It's too easy. But listen, Jack, this is gigantic. Jesus is grasped by the world, the darkness, the people outside these four walls. Jesus is grasped by the world when we as a church truly learn how to love people the way Jesus loves us and accept people. That's simple. You know how the world grasps grasp Jesus? By the way we love them. They will know you are my followers by the way you love them. Well, that was hard theology, wasn't it? They will know you are my disciples by the way you love. That's in the Bible. They will know you're my disciples by how much doctrine and theology you know, by all the isms. You got to come up with superlapsarianism and, you know, I need you to come up with cessationism and, you know, no, transubstantiation. It's got nothing to do with big words. It's got everything to do with how we love people. It goes back to what we talked about last week. When the world outside these four walls sees how we love each other in this room and then how we love people outside these four walls changes the world. Jesus knows that, but yet we complicate even that. Listen, there's not a person on this earth that's out there that doesn't desire to be loved or accepted. People are searching for a community of people that will accept them and love them and not reject them. And boy, the church a lot of times is good at rejecting people because you don't fit our mold. Holy cow, we've missed it. We can disagree with their lifestyle, and you will. There are people that you're going to disagree with their lifestyle and how they're living. But here at this church, and you may hate this, we might not be the best church for you, but we will never push anybody away. We want them coming in. Why? Because we believe in the power of the gospel, and we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, and God will change people's lives. Listen, we're the ones that his vessels to give Jesus to other people, and he is the one that changes their lives. This is the power of the gospel. It's the power of you. We will not push anybody away. Listen, I don't care. I don't care if they're homeless. I don't care if they're rich. I don't care if they're black, if they're white, if they're Asian. I don't care if they come in this place with Speedos. It'll be awkward for all of us, but get your tail in here because God's going to change your life some way, form, or fashion. Some of y'all just got a visual and it was just, I'm sorry. I don't care. And you may have a problem with that. You need to check your Jesus out. Jesus met, he, he met people where they were. Put too much pressure on us with it being our job to change people's lives. That's God's job. You can't change people's lives. You can be a vessel that God can use that he can change their life. Listen, it's our job to love people and meet them where they are, accept them where they are, and it's God's job to change them and set them free. We're just avenues. We're vessels for God to work through so that he can connect with them. And the one thing everybody desires is to be loved and accepted. You know, rejection has never changed lives, but love has. Rejection has never changed anybody's life. We can reject them all day long. Until you get, hey, until you get things right, you can come on in. Well, do you think them people are going to come back one day? They ain't coming back. You are like my southern vernacular? Ain't, they ain't coming back. It's not happening. But when we love them, God begins to change them. As Christians, a lot of times we're really good at telling people that before you can come to church or before God will have anything to do with you, you got to change your behavior. Hey, aren't you glad that God didn't say that about you whenever he changed your life? Because I'm going to step out and say 90% of you probably gave your life to Christ in a church, some way, form, or fashion. Aren't you glad he didn't say that to you? It's a big deal. So why would we say that to anybody else? 
Jesus is the only one that can change people's lives. So many people around us are looking for hope in a community of people that will accept them and love them. Listen, hear me. There is no community outside the church that should do a better job than us loving and accepting people. There's not another community out there. I'm telling you, there's people in here that does not like what I'm saying. But the big picture is Jesus met people where they were. You know, I think about, you know, if you listen to, to most every message that we preach as a church here, it's always going to center around some way, form, or fashion in the middle of it. It's going to center around God's love for you and God's di- desire for us to love others. God's love for you and God's desire for us to love others. Why? Because Jesus made it simple. What's the greatest commandments of all? Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. So everything we preach, I don't care what it's on, will end up being something around that area. And that's what changes the world, and God knows it. And honestly, this is the Christian life. My passion, my passion as a pastor is to help teach you. People that sit under my teaching, to sit under me preaching, sit under my voice, my passion as a pastor is to help teach you here how to live out Christianity. Listen, I don't want you to know the Bible. I want you to live out the Bible. I might, I might bother some people too. I want you to live it out. I don't want you to just know it. There's a lot of people that know the Bible and they mean as they come. I want you to live out the Bible. And so every single week, my my whole passion is to teach people how to walk with Jesus. And every single week, that's probably what you're going to hear. It's going to come out some way, form, or fashion because that's my heartbeat. It's to teach people how to walk the Christian life. Why? Because I'm going to teach doctrine in the middle of it, but all that's going to be focused on Jesus, some way, form, or fashion. So that why? Because I know that he's the one that brings life. And if you can get it and understand what it means to follow Jesus and walk with him, then we're going to go a long ways. You know, I think about, um, I was talking to an India pastor this way. I was talking to some other people that, that have adopted from India. And they're, you know, in India, you know, there are orphan children everywhere. They're walking the streets by themselves. Little bitty babies. They're digging in garbage, looking for food. And because it's so common that kids are just running the streets by themselves, sleeping in the, sleeping in the highways and the byways, digging in garbage, that adults don't even think nothing about it. They just walk right past all the kids who are out there digging in garbage. You know, if, if in America today we saw a kid digging in garbage, four or five, six years old, my life, we call them the police, like 911. They're, they just, it's just a normal thing. They, there's 33 million religions in India. 33 million religions in India. And about the only religion that has any kind of orphanage is Christianity over there. And every little boy, every little girl wants a mama or a daddy. Every one of them. And so, you know, if they can't find a Christian orphanage, then they're going to grow up in the streets if they don't die first. You know, I I had some people talking to me about this not too long ago, and I started thinking about one hour I was preparing for this sermon is that these children are looking to be taken into homes and longing for a mom or a daddy to love them and accept them. And in the same sense, there are people, us, that we pass in the streets or in our jobs every day that are spiritual orphans. They're searching for answers. They're searching for hope. They're looking. They're longing for a community. And we have the answer. But what scares me the most is that, that we may look like the adults that are in India right now a lot of times with these orphans because it's just so common. That we walk by people without realizing they're searching for love and acceptance and that they're orphans, that God wants to be a part of his family. And we have to answer to all their questions. There's times that we need to start praying that God will give us spiritual eyes so that we can help people. Listen, if we lived life and did church simply with the thought process of everything we do will be wrapped around Jesus and showing others his love and acceptance of them, it would change everything we do and how we would look at life. Desperation Church, that's who God's called us to be. That's how we need to look at life. We need to see life through spiritual eyes. That's who God's called us to be. The only way we can rebuild, revive, and restore the lives of people, cities, communities, and nations is only and simply by living out and giving people the beauty of Jesus, which is simplicity. It's the simplicity of the gospel. Let's be Jesus. Let's be Jesus. Desperate church, let's not complicate things. Let's make it simple. Why? Because there's people that, that are looking for answers. They're looking for community. 
There's no other, there's no other community in this world that should accept people better than we do. I don't care what kind of lifestyle they're in. We're going to let God change their lives. You may not like that. That's who we are. And we're going to do everything we can to meet people where they are. Hey, I'll be honest with you, as a pastor, that's very difficult, especially in the culture we live in. It's very, very difficult. There's a lot I could say about that. I let you in the pastor's world for a while. The conversations we have on staff, like how do we deal with this issue? How do we show them Jesus, but also let them know like this is not the direction God wants you to go? It's very, we know that if we run them off, we'll never have an opportunity to give them Jesus. It's hard. It's very, very hard. But we're going to do everything we can to give people Jesus and give them truth. All right? Let's pray. Father, we love you.